Episode 285, welcome Aussie Tech Headers. Welcome once again, it's uh, Thursday, another Thursday night. We love the Thursday nights and trouble free tonight. So that's good, going out live.thesecrethub.com if you want to join us live and uh, in, in the lounge. Welcome Lounge and uh, welcome Eric, how you doing? Hello sir, how are you going? Hello Lounge, how, we, how are you all? Yeah, not too bad. What have you been up to this week? Anything exciting? Oh, no, the usual. Uh, what's happened this week? Nothing's broken down. So far, um, so good. No, it's been a yeah, get. It's only Thursday. All uh, right. No, it's good. All good. Good. Well, we'll see what's going to happen because, uh, yeah, it looks like my CPU is maxing out, but uh, the audio is sounding good. So that's the main yes. thing. That's the main yes. thing. So, yeah, so uh, join us live if you have the time. Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, or you can watch the video back via YouTube, which you can get via the Boxy. If you the YouTube app on the boxy, uh, youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. And uh, well, what else can we do? We can you can call in live to the show if I see the Skype jump up and down while we're recording. Uh, Skype at tech, Skype handle Aussie Tech Heads. And uh, that's uh, yeah, the paper, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. If you want to read a bit of what's going on uh, in a nice, congested little well, no, I wouldn't say it's congested, but concise paper format, go and have a look at paper techheads.com.au Got a few stories this week. It's, uh, it feels like a, it's a bit relaxed tonight, isn't it, Dave? Uh, it feels a bit... Uh, uh, it's very a relaxed. I'm, 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 I'm a bit prepared tonight. A yes. bit better prepared. Yeah, same here. There hasn't been any issues, although I uh, did have a bit of a scare before um, before the show came on when uh, the the tech webcast before the show, we uh, rebroadcast at 7pm, uh, techwebcast.info, started to have a few... Little audio issues of their own right at the end of their show, and I thought it was coming through at my end. So another quick panic Thursday night panic, but all was uh, all yeah, was yeah. always all. I always had a, I had, a, I had a Thursday afternoon panic when my internet connection decided to give me a ping of a four hundred millisecond <laughs> instead of my usual five, and oh, uh, well. so I had to reset reset everything, and uh, it's all good now. And as Milo in the lounge just pointed out, it was it is Friday the thirteenth tomorrow, so we have got to hurry up so we don't go past midnight. Otherwise, we're That's all right. going to talk, t- t- turn into pumpkins. Yeah, and if anyone wants to know the history of Friday the 13th, I'm happy to tell them. Yeah, okay, go. I don't really know. Oh, you don't know? Not really. Um, in about the 11th century, a pope, I can't remember his name, um, gave the order to execute, round up, kill, burn, whatever you want to call Exterminate. it. Exterminate. Uh, a group of um, religious warriors called the Templar Knights. And that happened in October 13 in the 11th century, and hence the name Friday the 13th. Right, and it, and Black Friday is the same. Comes from the same thing, like. Yep. 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 It's burn. all based on that original, uh, original event. Event. Right. Oh, I'm glad I wasn't there. No. Yes. Uh, all right. So, um, some stories. What's been going on in the world? Or in, in particular, around the, the around Australia, around the world, I've got a I've got a story. I'll I'll kick off. Kick off. I'll little, go, I'll go straight after you. All right. Well, the little Apple Apple is uh, fighting some infections. Apple haters, you better you better listen now, can you rub your hands with glee? <laughs> so yes, Apple says it's working to shut down the flashback infection. The flashback infection. So mm. what? Yeah, so there we go. So, um, so this in, this infection. Look, we've got a little web page there. So, yeah, no good. So, have you haven't got the infection? No. The virus? God no. You know what I reckon? It doesn't matter whether you've got Mac or a PC, or you've got a virus checker or not. If you're surfing websites that you shouldn't be on, if you're clicking on links in emails. You're going to get a you're going to get a virus. Hmm. Apparently, if you're not if, if you're not being if you're not being careful, then you you deserve a virus. So this uh, regardless of what what operating system you're on. The flashback malware, as it is known, has infected more than six hundred and fifty thousand Mac computers, which it's a lot, but relatively, it's probably not a, that many. No, but, but it's a lot for Apple. Oh yeah, for sure. And they are they are in a bit of a panic in trying to get this fixed. Apple's creating software to detect and eradicate the Trojan, which is capable of stealing data, hijacking search results, and installing additional malware. In addition, Apple is working with internet service providers to disable the botnet's command and control network. 
Uh, last week, two Java security updates for Mac OS X 10.7 and 10.6, Lion and Snow Leopard, respectively. They patched the vulnerability being used to spread it, the, the, the virus flashback. But for users still running 10.5 and earlier versions, Apple suggested they turn off Java functionality through the browser preferences. Why would anyone be... I suppose, yeah, you've got to p- probably pay to update, don't you? So, yeah, yeah, make sure you update your all your, your system if you've got an Apple mm. um, system. Mm. And as as PA says in the lounge, it's all in America. Well, that's that's nearly correct. It's fairly correct. It's about 80% in North America. That would include Canada, about 80% in the, of the uh, infections. Yeah, so look, I read that, and I'd make sure that I, all my little updates were downloaded they were so i was i was i was good to go but uh yeah it's uh it would have the apple world worried the viruses are coming yes they're coming you guys are getting too popular yes well you know let's um let's i i I started on this podcast about a year ago and in that time glenn you have purchased (laughs) a mac mini a apple tv yeah an ipad yeah. Um, and your wife has got herself a MacBook Pro. And an iPhone 4S. And an iPhone 4, and, a, and you're getting the next iPhone. So, And I've already, and no, also, so, you've also forgot the Airport Express. Airport Express. Oh, you've got one of those two. Very good. That's right. <laughs> have, have you got that hooked up? No. <laughs> yeah, God, you're useless. <laughs> it's on the bench. It's not that hard, dude. I know but, it's not uh, hard. It's just getting time. I've done I know. You've got to get the time. I know what you mean. I, you I know, know, I've, I've got to put it out there and, you know, I've got to buy it. So that's bit. just one house. So think about that. That's just one household. Yes. Out of many, 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 many households that have gone to Apple. Oh, classic. Another classic one. My mother, who's 74, went and bought herself a MacBook Air last week. Yeah, right. And she's got, a, and she's got an iPhone. Yeah, right, nice, nice. And she brought it around on um, Sunday. She, she brought she, she got it on Friday. She didn't mm. touch it. She said, I'll bring it around on Sunday and you can set it up for me. So I set it up her email and showed her how to use it and all that sort of stuff. And she's loving it. Yeah, it's easy. They're easy. They're easy. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why the Commonwealth Bank bought 6,500 6, of them. Oh, excuse me. Oh, is that right? Mm, excuse me a sec. <coughs> Hang on, I have to have a little drink as well. So the com bank made you throw up. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Just the thought of it. Oh, oh the bank. Oh, 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 oh. oh, they're the they're the ones that took my uh my, my life savings as a kid. I don't know if I did I tell oh, you yes, did I tell you about right. that. Right, yes, we all saved with them and I'm still waiting for uh my interest bill. Yeah, well I, I went to close my account, I had forgotten about it all until I was, I don't know, twenty two or something, found the passport and went, oh, I'll go and close this and got there and it was all eaten up by fees. And I went Yeah, well done. Thanks for that. Anyway, but the but this is a strange story, I reckon. Uh, the Commonwealth Bank has uh, purchased six thousand MacBook Air uh, for Why its. Are they call it MacBook. Who's this journalist? MacBook Air device, and it's not a device; it's a computer. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe she's not a technical journo. Well, but obviously, it, but they've bought the six thousand Airs uh, for their activity-based workplace last year. Whatever the hell that is. But the major- yeah. but. Um, now they're configured by the integrator HP to HP. boot directly into the Combank's no, Windows so they put XP. Boot camp on it. Yeah, they put boot. They just basically it's a Mac running Windows. Why? Like why? I would suggest that the, the um, quality of the hardware. But it's given them problems, according to this IDC. Uh, company uh, software analysis Vanessa Thompson. Software issues may have arisen from how the MacBook devices, which typically run the Apple's operating system, were configured to boot directly into Windows. If ComBank required software to be customised, it may have affected application speed and, and re- reliability, she said. With the Airs configured to boot the Windows XP directly from the bare metal machine, HP, like why wouldn't they buy HP? But anyway, HP have had to recode some of the applications to execute in this manner. The difficulty would be in making sure the application would stand up in the environment and remain robust particularly as the application may be, architect, may be architected to run on a Windows environment. Why did they buy Macs? Like, seriously? Look, look I don't know, but I, I, I hear many, many stories of um, a lot of people buying Macs and putting Windows on it because the hardware itself is a better quality than just, say, a Dell. But that, that's... And look, I've, I've booted 
I've got, I have in the past, I have, I've taken it off now, but I have in the past booted straight into Windows, Windows 7 on on my Mac, MacBook Pro. And I've never had the problems that they're, they're suggesting here. I would suggest that the integrator, HP, don't know what they're doing I because would, it's not that hard. No, it's look, so simple. I, I would suggest that it's, it's not the integrator. I, I don't think the problem is booting into it. I think it's, it's actually like running, the, I would I, I imagine, proprietary software. Like it's built for an IBM machine. It's built for Windows. They've, tu- like they've turned around to put it onto a, a Apple hardware. I know all the, well, the, the guts are oh, very much make the same. It, it, I wouldn't imagine it would make a difference if you're running an operating system that the Mac runs on quite well mm. because he's not, it look, oh, maybe it's the XP in conjunction with their software that's, not, that's the issue rather than the Mac. Well, yeah, well, maybe if it, if it is XP that they're doing, like maybe there's no drivers for the, 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 the stuff well, that's, that's in right, there. Well, that's right, because it runs no problem with Windows 7. So what, HP has to just hock up a few, you know, drivers on the go? Just to... Oh, I just, yeah. oh look, you I, know, I, some I, of these people yeah, are I just, just useless. I just don't useless. understand at all from the start why would, why would they buy the, the MacBooks if they're going to run XP? I, I just, well, they should have, number one, they should have done a couple of tests on a few machines before they put in the order of 6,000 MacBook Airs and see if it would actually work, and I bet you they didn't do that, morons. Mm. <laughs> and secondly, um, I would suggest that the hardware is a better quality. Mm. That's why they've done it. Well, they must have. But, but, but if HP's doing the integration, <laughs> wouldn't HP go, oh, hang on, um, I think we sell computers and laptops as well? Ex- yeah, well, but that's true. But see... The integrator, the HP integrators, they're just service providers. They don't sell hardware. But if someone was doing their job, they would have suggested, look, I'll put yeah. you in touch with someone that sells hardware. Or well, 6,000 machines. Done, oh, okay, then let's <laughs> order 6,000 MacBook Airs before we test them. Yeah. <laughs> Morons. Anyway, anyway. Um, now, Apple iPads 4G, been a bit of strife over here in Australia about the, the yeah. Su- yeah, supposedly <laughs> misleading... Uh, Advertising, I don't believe that that's the case. Look, I don't have my head in, inside the TV all day long, but I've never seen any advertising to say that would work in Australia. In fact, I, it, you could probably correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it might have even been mentioned on in the launch, was it, by Apple that it was only going to work in the US? I think, um, in I the, think they had something like a disclaimer saying uh, 4G only works in some countries, something, something mm. along those lines. I'm paraphrasing. So now, um, so you know what? They've never said ever that it's Apple will work 4G. That's the name of the product, the Apple mm. 4G. Yes. So, yeah. you know. Well, it is, it, is a four, it is a 4G. You take it to America and it'll work. So oh, it'll scream. It'll work. Absolutely scream. So anyway, uh, Britain is now jumping on board. Now, this is, this was a funny sort uh, of story. Yeah, bloody socialist <laughs> so the British Advertising Standards Authority ha- may launch action against Apple after receiving numerous complaints. Numerous complaints. Apparently 24. By morons who bought it. No, 24. Without reading. 24 anything. complaints they received. 24? 24. Out, out of the <laughs> 1 trillion devices that they, well, they sold, they're going to act on 24 complaints. That's talk about the minority having a bigger footprint. Yeah, this is where it's say here. There we go. The watchdog had received 24 complaints. There we go. I highlighted it. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. Now, um, so, so they've received 24 complaints, but they may be going to do a full investigation. However, Apple reportedly uh, has pushed back relatively hard on the 4G issue, even though it's widely known. And, it, and even though, and how's this, Someone, 24 complaints on sale in Britain. Uh, everyone's upset that, that, well, 24 people are upset that can't do 4G, but it's widely known no carrier in Britain has rolled out 4G yet anyway. So, yeah, so what are they complaining go about? Go figure that. What, are they, what do they want? <laughs> anyway. Oh, look, these are just, you know, well, yeah. hang on a minute. You've heard of the, uh, the term whinging pommy, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, so sorry to insult our, our our English listeners, but I'm sure you're not one of these people. And if you are, please write into Glenn at <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pass it on to Eric. Now <laughs> I set up a folder. Now um, Sweden's Talia Sonera, which is their biggest uh, telco, advises the consumers that if they want true 4G speeds, how's this one? Why don't we do this? They would need to buy an additional 4G router and access the internet through the Wi-Fi connection. 
How's that? That's oh, not... gee. Duh. <laughs> but that, that's something that I never thought of. Like, over here, you could do that and then you... Well, I, I could I could do it with uh, my 4G dongle, but I yeah. wouldn't need to because we've got I've got the 100 megabit, so have you at home. What's the point? Yeah, well, but if, when you're out and about, you, you'd have yes. your 4G thing in your pocket buzzing around. Yes, giving, correct. You know. Yeah, you get the 4G. Well, Telstra sells the 4G MiFi. Right. I could have got... I could have got um, either the dongle, which you plug straight in, or the 4G MiFi, which can five devices can hook into. And how much do they sell those MiFi's for? About two, three hundred bucks if you buy it outright. But if you're on a plan, it's free. Yeah. Okay. Right. 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 So I don't so know. You could be in the car going on a trip. Yeah. Just turn the thing on. Yeah. Velcro it to the dashboard. Yeah. And everyone in the car's got access. Beautiful. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's all right. That's not a bad idea, actually. I was thinking, yeah, why would you? What would? Yeah, but that's a good idea. But uh, but yeah, anyway. So the four G, like, look, I don't know. This thing is only seems to be compatible pretty much in the US. Like, so surely For the now, goodness. Yeah. They, they, what, I reckon what? the next the next batch that coming, not the next model, but you know how they probably make batches every few months or so. Yeah. They might say, you know, now 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 four G compatible in in Australia or something. You know. Hmm. Hmm. So. Yeah, like well, how hard is it just to, to bung in a new chip? Or I don't know, must well, it? I don't know. Is I, it well, hard? it can't be that hard. I wouldn't think so. It's only just... you know, if, if Samsung can do it. Hmm. Well, yeah, look, I can't comment on Samsung. They're not my favourite company. <laughs> I don't think they can do anything. I'm never buying anything from them again. I've had it. Get Virgin to do it. Get three to do it. <laughs> All right, so did you have any Apple stories while we're um, talking about I've Apple? I've got a couple, but I've got one story here talking about phones. Mm. There's a study in Sweden. A Swedish study has found that uh, there is no reason to ban texting or talking on cell phones while driving. Right. Interesting, isn't it? A report by the Swedish National Road and Transport Institute based in Linköping, southern Sweden, found that educating drivers on the safer use of devices was preferable to a total ban. Well, that may be true, but if you are trying to educate a country full of morons, mm. then that's going to be quite difficult. Um, it, it, look, I, our, he says here, he continues to say that, uh, in our opinion, a, a combination of different countermeasures which, edu which educate and inform the driver while at the same time support him or her in a safe usage of communication devices is preferable. Uh, Sweden is one of a handful of European countries to allow the use of cell phones while driving without hands-free devices. Others include Albania, Serbia, Moldova, and Malta. So they're all first-world countries, obviously. Mm. <laughs> but but I mean, but like... look, I've look, we've all spoken on the yeah. phone without hands-free. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, I I find it distracting. Oh yeah. And I've got a hands-free kit in my car, and even that sometimes can be mm. distracting. And a lot of the time, I will pull over even if I've got hands-free. Mm. Look, it, it's not like hands free is still not like talking to someone in the car uh, I don't know why maybe because you can't see them that you're imagining you're seeing them yeah. I don't know what it is but depends who you're talking to <laughs> well, yeah. the hell, what, have, what, have, what have you got on <laughs> well that's exactly right uh, that you would be pulling it well maybe yeah, use right, different terminology but um, yeah so you would um, look it is distracting it is distracting I would recommend you pull over uh, another thing that I know that sometimes I do, and when you sort of pull yourself out of it, you think, "Geez, I've got to stop this." Is like you start, yes. you get a text message in the car. Oh, that's horrible! You read, you and you pull, you pull your phone out and you read it, and then you start to reply, yeah. and you go, "Oh, gee, I can't do that." I'm oh, what am I doing? Oh, that's right. I always pull over. Yeah, I just, or just I wait till I'm at a set of lights. Yeah, or something like. That. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, but sometimes with the phone, because I don't have a hands-free kit, but I'll put it up under the the visor. You know, yes, I'll answer right. it and just stick it up under the visor, and that's good enough yes. for me. And on speaker, yes. obviously. And that's, yes, that's, yes, of course. Yeah, but yeah, it is still dis distracting. Mm. Um, yeah, yes, so there you go. Yes. Anyone, uh, what's Milo asking? Anyone see the Pack to the Rafters episode last year? What's that got to do? Oh, the chick was on it and she killed herself. Had an accident. What chick? I don't know. I think what, that, oh, that, right, that okay, what happened. She was on the phone. Yeah, All right, I think put so. that in the ad, Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, something else that got it's got killed off <laughs> years ago, but it's still alive. Can you imagine it? But it's nearly dead. It's nearly finished. What's that? Nokia? No, Rim. no XP. It's nearly gone. Oh, nearly gone. It's a piece of garbage. Steve Gibson still uses SP. You know, Steve. Oh my God, viruses! The world's coming to an end. 
Well, get off XP, you moron. Microsoft has reminded firms still running Windows XP, and there are quite a few of them, especially in uh, in Australia. And I know of probably two or three that I've seen because, you know, you walk into these government departments, you, you can see what's on the screen. You go, what are you doing with XP? Yeah. Fair income. They're still running Windows 98. Oh, wouldn't that be bad? Special edition. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a piece of crap? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah. Uh, the XP will end support for the operating system on April 8, 2014. So it's nearly dead and buried. Support God, for, it's taken them ages oh, to bury this thing. I oh, know. Uh, support for Office 2003 will also end at the same time. Organisations attempting to migrate off XP, Internet Explorer 6 and old <laughs> applications are tied to the browser, So, which only support XP supports. So that's why they're hanging on, because um, a lot of these enterprises have things that are, you know, hacked, hobbled together and hacked together and that will only work yeah. with uh, Internet Explorer 6 because that was just so much of a proprietary type of browser that, um, and it's yeah, to a certain extent, uh, IE is still, you know, different to the rest of them. Yeah. yeah. Some things, so I, yeah, some things I can't open up in, if I can't open it in a browser, I'll use XP because you go, oh yeah, well this, that's probably right. That'd be right. Mm. Mm. So anyway, the uh, XP, and apparently Vista as well, is uh, due to expire. Oh, God. You know what? You know what's something funny? About a year ago, um, I was I walked into a Harvey Norman to my disgust because I banned them altogether. I don't buy any from Harvey Norman anymore. Mm, I and don't either. In the, in the specials bin, <laughs> Windows Vista, $5. Really? Yeah, oh, that, $5. Oh, I was hoping to put mine on eBay. I've got three copies oh, here. <laughs> Does anyone want it? You can have it for the postage. How's that? Yeah, just, <coughs> you know what? Tell them to mail you an express post bag. Mm, yeah. And then you'll send it back. Yes, do that. Do that. Well, email me first to make sure I've still got it. That no one else yeah, no right. beat you. Because otherwise you'll get eight <laughs> eight express post bags. <laughs> that's right. And I'll, I'll just have nothing to put in. I'll send them back with fresh air in them. Uh, yeah, that's right. But yeah, look, Vista, I, I thought I might have found a use for Vista a little while ago. I thought, oh, yeah, I could load up a machine with the media center on it. Woo, you know, and uh, yes, just yes. have, but uh, the media center is just pus as well. It's, that's, oh, really? It's not uh, fully integratable or it's it's just, yeah, because you record something on the Windows 7 media center. Well, then because that's out, it's got a different extension, different format to the Vista. Well, obviously the oh, Vista. Why do they do that? Vista, look, media center, even now with window on Windows 7 is... Look, it's it is it has potential to be so good, but there's no support for it. There's not you can't. Oh, they it's, just don't know how to do it. Look, something. Look back to you know Microsoft don't know how to do anything, right? And I've just got this classic, classic. This is classic. You're gonna love this. This is Microsoft. They just don't know how to do anything. They're just useless. Nokia, right? They've released the 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 big hoo ha, Nokia Lumia. 900, right, right. The, yeah. the, the touch screen with the Windows, um, you know, Windows Phone 7 operating system with its um, kindergarten looking bloody interface on it. Mm. And mm. they've released it last week and it doesn't work. So oh. what's happened here? Um, <laughs> Nokia confirmed that it is it, it, it identified a software, software, mind you, not hardware. Nokia makes the hardware. Guess who makes the software? Microsoft identified a software problem that left some early Lumia 900 customers in the U.S. unable to connect to the Internet. I'll keep going. Um, the issue was with men a memory management problem. Gee, Microsoft have never had that problem with their operating system, <laughs> memory management, and not, not tied to any hardware issues. They made that very clear. Now, Nokia created the software fix so they can swap their device or they, or they can swap their device, and they're getting $100 credit as well from mm. AT&T, right? Now, so blah, 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 that's all sort of out in the wash. Everyone's annoyed. They sent, they got their phones. They swapped them over or, or downloaded it. But get this. They released the phone on Easter Sunday <laughs> when everything is closed. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, that is terrible. What is... How bad are these people? Yeah. How bad is that? Why would... Oh... Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. Microsoft just don't know how to do anything. I'm sorry, Steve Ballmer has to go because obviously the culture of incompetence starts at the top. 
Well, I suppose, like, even though, like, you don't expect Steve to be across every aspect. No, no, of, no, that's of, not the issue. But he, he he's, you know, yeah, but, but it's, he, the, it's, it's the culture. If you accept hmm. nothing less than excellence, hmm. then you're going to hire people who are, who are, aren't, who are not excellent hmm. and have no excellence yeah. and, no, and, no, and don't know how to do anything. So, and these are the people that flow, it flows down the line. The culture of incompetence always flows down the line. But, but, so you surround yourself with morons. You're always playing with a B team, as yeah. Steve Jobs called it. Yeah. Instead of yeah. hiring an A team. And Steve Ballmer hires B people and they hire B people. Mm. So, yeah. And this guy yeah, that's handled this, this launch is obviously less than B. He's probably mm. a C minus. But that, that happens should in a, be should be sacked. That happens in a lot of places. You have you find that that, that culture is like will hire like, and uh, and yes, that's why because there's no threat. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You're not going to hire a lot of people. Will not hire anyone better than them. Yeah, because yeah. it makes them look inadequate. Mm. Because that's what they are. And like and and at the end of the day, Barmer might not have been responsible for that for that stuff up, but he no. should he is the one accountable for it. And, then, and so the, the buck stops with him. That's right. At the end so of the day. He should because he, he should be the, out. The guy that did the hiring might have been you know ten lines down mm. from Bomber. Yeah. But who hired him? And who hired the one before mm. him? So it, it's just you've got a bunch of B players down the line. That's the problem. Yeah, but Easter Sunday are they dead set serious? And oh yeah. God, you're doing a major launch. This is the best phone they've ever released for this operating system, which isn't, which isn't that crash hot in the first place. And you would think. They would get it Easter Sunday. Yeah, it runs on holidays. <laughs> oh, that's right. Everything's shut. Oh, Jesus that's God. what happens. So everyone goes to the AT and T stores to get their phones on Easter Sunday because I heard about the launch, thinking mm. that maybe the stores were going to have a, they're going to open, you know, especially for this event. And yeah. same with the Microsoft stores. No, shut. <laughs> everyone, everything shut. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Microsoft, Steve Ballmer. You're a moron. Happy days. Happy days. All right. Now, uh, Eric's done an Audible uh, pick this week. Did you want to do your Audible pick before or after we hear from Garth? Uh, we'll, we'll do it after. All right. Well, we'll we're, we're going to have a have a little listen to Garthy Boy. And he's got another app for us this week for the iOS devices. And uh, this one, I think it may interest you, if you're particularly if you're into music and so forth. So let's have a let's have a look and see what Garth is up to uh, this week. Hey, Glenn here again with Garth as usual for another iOS review this week, a free one, and it is Hakusei. Hakusei, <laughs> audio editor. What's that you say? Hakusei. Oh, had something no. in my throat. Yeah, how, how are we going with that one? What, what's Good day, Glenn. On? Hey. Bless you, mate. Bless you. Oh, boy. thank you, thank you. <laughs> I've got this little hair <laughs> stuck in back of throat. <laughs> That's an interesting name, isn't it? It is. Don't that ask is. me why it's called Hockey Say, but apparently it is. All right. Now, beautiful clutter-free interface. Interface. It's a multi-track um, audio editor. So Sweet. it's a freebie. Um, you can purchase packs within it to give you a few more uh, higher quality um, oh, what do you call it, effects and so forth. Yep. But basically, it lets you do cut and paste of audio. Anyone who does any audio editing will know what I mean. You know, multi-track recording. Um, you can then go in and edit, edit. You know, do trimming, trim the front and end off, cut bits out of, cut and paste audio clips into different parts of the track. Yeah, nice. Add in silences if you want to extend it a little bit here or there, or um, speed it up. All sorts of stuff like that. Mm. Um, you can do the normalizing straight through the app. Wow. Um, so you've used this one, Garth. I have used it, yeah, um, to just edit a bit of audio in a like a little podcast. Yeah, right, right. Um, a little how-to. I just loaded the track up. Um, supports Dropbox. Nice. So I had it in my Dropbox folder, yep. put in my credentials for the app. Um, so, it, yeah, so Hockerside comes with a free set of useful tools such as fade-in, as, as you said, fade-in, fade-out. Yep. Reverse time, basic synthesis. If you need more power, you can upgrade from inside the app to add new tools and effects, including auto-copy, auto-paste, time bar, uh, per track volume. Oh, wow. That go, list goes on. Modulation, AM and FM. Woohoo! Distortion, grunge. <laughs> and oh. To be honest, <laughs> I played with a few of the, like, the normalising and stuff like that. Wasn't really happy compared to with a proper audio editor, like, in, you know, like... um. Amadeus Pro or something like that. Yeah. But for basic, dirty, here's a track, 
cut it, you know, just want to edit a few bits and pieces out of it. Yep. Stuff like that. Beautiful. Nice. Works really well. So a new version has been released and new in, ver- in version 1.08, new selection, snap to zero crossings. Uh, if a recording is in progress when you switch to another app, Hokusai continues to record. Easier easier for customers to check which upgrades are installed. So check that one out. That looks good. If you're into audio recording on your iPad hmm. or your iPod uh, or iPhone, yeah, check him out. iOS 4. Good on you, yeah. Garth. Beautiful. Okay. See, see you later, Glenn. See you next time. All right, there you go. How about editing audio on your iOS device? That's pretty cool. Might be an alternative to the garage That's phone, phone and iPad. Oh, I'm not sure. I know I said it was, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might have just been throwing it out there, uh, but well, if oh, you, I'm sure it's both. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, but make sure it is before you download it for your iPhone. But uh, listen, uh, you can watch the Garth just Garth reviews independently of Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, you just go to the Aussie Tech Heads webpage and look for iOS reviews under the show tab. I think it is at the moment. I'm going to tidy all those up pretty soon. But iOS reviews, and then you'll get a list of Garth's reviews, what he's reviewed, and you can watch the video in independently of uh so you don't have to download the show and um re-watch it you know to get to it so there you go Ooh, give that a shot all right now all right are, are we ready for the pick of the week why don't we do one story and then all we'll right. do the audio all right well let right. me go with do you want to do a story or do you want me to do a story i'm, I'm, I'm this is not i'm not going to have an, an opinion on this i'm just going to give a report card on the nbn because they release their report card during the week, so I'm just going to I'm just going to okay. repeat what they've said, and I will not put my personal comments in this whatsoever. And, All right, uh, the, you can make your minds up. Okay. All right, go. The f- first half of last year. Yep. Second half of last year. Sorry, H two. That's half second half. Their revenue was three hundred and fifty six thousand dollars. Oh. Screaming. Screaming. No personal... No, I'm not making any personal <laughs> comments. Okay. Uh, its expenses... Uh, it made a loss of $221 million. Oh, wow. In, that's double the $104 million loss in the second half of the same time the previous year. Yeah. Um, but in total, the Australian government... Reported the loss NBN recorded last year to the tune of two hundred and twenty million. Uh, he has spent in the six months five hundred uh, three hundred and forty-six million on capital expenditure, which is fair enough. But can I just interject there for a second? Mm-hmm. When you uh, when these figures are coming out, profits and losses and all this sort of stuff. So this mm-hmm. is just purely operation operating o- of operating. Su- of supplying operating. the service once it's been Correct. put. This is not the, the, this is not the expenditure that the, the money that's spent in building the assets is not included on the profit and loss. That's on the balance sheet. Yeah. So this is just operating once people once they have the the service in the ground to the house. Yeah. People, you know, salaries, yeah. rent, yep. telephone, stationery, you know, ADSL one connection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they've spent three hundred and forty six million on capital expenditure, which is on the balance sheet, which included. 86 million for fiber rollout and 12 million on satellite and wireless solutions. Now, if you add that up, that's 98 million out of the 346. Mm. I'd like to know where the other 270 million was spent. <laughs> that's not made clear. Is that is that is there a little section down the bottom there? Sundry, sundry expenses. No, I'll, I'll be I'll be digging that up. <laughs> um, I'd like to know where whose balance sheet that went to. No. Oh. Now. Yes. Now, look, with it, I've with got an NBN story yeah. before we get off the topic. That's what, right. B, BTW. Right. Tell me uh, when you're finished. Yes. Go <laughs> on. Okay. Have you finished with yours? No. Okay. But I can go? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can go in a minute. Okay. Keep going. Now, the reason I'm not making any personal comments is because I want to be objective about this. In the start of any utility you're not going to have a massive take-up. So these figures are really meaningless at this at this point in time. However, what you have to consider is how long they're going to get a return on their investment should this sort of figures and take-up continue. So that's all I'm going to say on that. 
Now, on that part, they've got they've got work underway on ninety two thousand premises. They have they have they're, they're, they've passed 14,000 premises and only 1,400 are receiving active fibre broadband services. Um, what was that? There was some what? figure. I don't know. Look, this is... I just read it. There was, some, there was a figure bandied around 110. What was 110? What's yeah, 110? I don't know. There was a, I was reading a few of the... Oh, Greenfield developments. Oh, um, that's what broadband, it was. seems 110 new developments were activated. Sorry, people in new, you know, new housing estates, etc. Yeah, 110. That's, right. that's great. Now, this is this is the bit that you all should think about. Here on fire. The last bit. So they've spent all this money. It's making losses, but that's understandable. We all expect that. It's a utility. It's supposed to run at a loss when it's being built. We understand that. I think the main concern is that the take-up rate is slower than it should be because it's, well, it's because the Labor government's running it. Well, what else would you expect? But this is the this is the figure. Now, keep in mind. Revenue was three hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars. Okay. Its income, other income, non-operational income, was the form of interest on deposits in the bank, and that figure came in at twenty-nine million dollars. What? Yeah. So, so what? What does that mean? They've, they've got they've stashed the money in the bank. Well, they've got money in the bank, and the money in the bank. Has earned more money yeah, right. than <laughs> but, but, the but, return on the actual investment. Okay, so but interestingly enough, okay, so the 110 people in Greenfields have taken it up, <laughs> and there's only a handful. Yes. Of, there's not too many. And more. there have been a lot of Greenfield estates. These Greenfield estates can have up to a thousand houses per per estate. So, so 110 times mm-hmm. a thousand. That's 110,000 homes, of which only one percent of one percent has taken up the connection. But interestingly enough, at the end of last month, when the NBN uh, released and announced the stage three of their construction, constructional roadmap The, the election plans, rollout, yes, the election yeah. rollout. Well, apparently, as the story goes, like their site was smashed with people wanting to know when the NBN was being offered to mm-hmm. them. So why mm. is there a low take-up when it appears that so many people are interested in it? Are interested. Are they, they, well, okay, think about that question. Are they just interested? Very carefully. But when it comes to they are in the out. wrong areas, the yeah. people that are looking for the connections and their sites got smashed are people who can afford it and are not mm. getting it. The mm. reason they're not getting signups is because the areas that they're putting it in, people don't have no interest in it because they're older or or they're technophobic or they don't mm. understand or they've got no money. Yeah, I don't want to insult anyone in low income areas, but really, who in Blacktown is going to afford a hundred bucks a, a month on internet? Mm. Yeah, look, well, hundred bucks a month, even not just for people in that sort of uh, situation, but like, geez, if I wasn't doing a podcast or whatever, there'd be no way I'd be paying a hundred bucks a month. You know, like no, I, well, I would. But well, not, but I'm not. Just, uh, <laughs> but, but my MBN story, you know, well, like, I'm paying for two hundred gigs, and like when I look at it, I real look even even when I'm not uh, doing my uh, backup, you know, crash plan backups to the stars. Yeah. Uh, my internet usage, even doing this podcast and stuff, is probably just a tickle over a hundred gig a month. Like I'm yeah, not, I'm not right. a, a a big user, but I've got the two hundred just in case. But uh, yeah. but NBN have announced that they've at the outsource provider of its customer contact center a year ago. They've scrapped them. They've announced that it's now going to bring it in house, and it's yes. going to locate the center, the contact center on the Gold Coast, just yes. over the way from me. At Varsity Lakes, now right now keep going. There's an there's an irony to this story, which I think you'll probably pick up. Now I was going to just to go on and say the uh, MBN Co said it chose Varsity Lakes because it's best met a range of criteria. So oh, it's best met a range of criteria. Company including a substantial population base with an appropriate contact center employment pool. Now that's that's pretty good. Now I was thinking, geez, Varsity Lakes, that's pretty close to me. Geez, we must be pretty much near the same exchange. So anyway, so. <laughs> So I looked to the, I looked, I looked to the, looked to the gods, looked at the map. There we go. I typed in Varsity Lakes, and guess what? It's not even not on the there. agenda. In in three, no. it's not even in the three year plan to get the MBN. No, it's not a, it's not no. even in the three year plan. Because when you type in a in yeah, a well, town, that's the irony of it. They're putting it. They've, they've chosen Varsity Lakes because it's a tech hub, and they can, they can get you know tech minded 
qualified people to run the contact centre, yeah. but Varsity Lakes is not on their agenda to put NBN in because mm. it's a Liberal seat. Yeah, but look, I, I, th- I think most of the Gold Coast is is blue at the moment. Uh, well, well, of course it is. Ask the but, Tarago Caucus. <laughs> I'm not sure about federally. They'll tell but, you. But I mean, look, the whole the whole reason I think that the, the NBN is going to hit the Gold Coast pretty much blanketly is because the Commonwealth Games, as I've said in it's previous got occasions, but uh, it's but got to, because they're going to put it in all the athletes' village, all the hotel rooms will hmm. have access to it, and the the, the 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 guests, the you know, the people coming in to town hmm. are going to you know speak very highly of the infrastructure if if it is in fact put in. Now, you know what they should put it in, and it should be a priority yeah. over anything else, but. I don't think they're going to do it because they are useless. Now, this uh, I don't think they're that forward thinking. Yeah, here's another question for you. This has only just recently been announced, and maybe recently as 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 old as the article being concocted. But I don't know. You know that, that we'll never know. But my my suggestion or my point to you would be that is this one of the is this one of the decisions that we may be going to start to see in Queensland because of what happened in the state election? Is this this little tech hub decision to put it in the middle of the Gold Coast where that's not even planned to be rolled out. Is this one of those decisions? Well, look, let's, uh, let's federal government bring something good. Yes, good to I, the I agree. It's, 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 I think it's part of their electioneering leading up to the election. If we take care of Queensland, maybe we won't lose so many seats. Mm. If we don't lose so many seats, maybe we won't, we won't get thrashed in the federal election. So, mm. yes, they'll be pork barrel in Queensland quite a bit. Yeah. So uh, I can't think of a better way to pork barrel my area, but let's bring it on. <laughs> pork it. Pork it, I say. Now, just, uh, pork just me type, in, type in my address there. Could you do that for me? Okay. And uh, what's, your sub- what's your postcode? Uh, 2073. Oh, or you've got the little cyclops. See, look at all, look at all around it. Look, look at this, the green. Look at that, Labor, up here to your left, Labor. Everything from <laughs> number three, Some like e- Chatswood, yeah, all the way up north. That's all liberal. See all that blank stuff? That's all liberal. <laughs> up here. <laughs> Everything, yeah. Where you can't see any NBN going on. Nah, yeah. That's liberal. So three, three. So all this down here, Marsfield, Macquarie Park. Oh yeah, North Ride. Labor. That's yeah. Labor. West Ride. Labor. Dundas Valley, Epping. Oh, that's Labor. <laughs> Where's uh, wasn't wasn't there something funny about didn't the was it oh, I can't remember. This might just all be just smoke and mirrors, but wasn't was there a story about that it terminated at the end of um Malcolm Turnbull yeah, Street yeah, or something? It, it, in, type in Wentworth. Uh, uh type in um uh, uh Darling Point. I can't, oh, okay, the postcode 2027. Oh, geez, what's happened then? Oh, hello, what happened? Oh, well, there I am. Hello. <laughs> 2027. 2027. Yeah. And just zoom in on that. There we go. Right? That's there you go. <laughs> Nothing. So that's, is now, that Malcolm zoom, out zoom there? Zoom out a little bit. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah. All right. Okay. There you go. That's a good one. See all that around there? Three. three. See more. P- that, that's all Labor, mate. See yeah. the city, the rocks and Haymarket, that's yeah. Clover Moor. Right. Okay. Yeah. So she's Labor. Yeah. Oh, um, isn't she green? Is she Labor? Is more, she? more Park. More Park down the bottom. See? Yeah. That's probably close to, if not Peter Garrett's seat <laughs> around there. He's in, yeah. um, what you call it? He's in Kingsford, but that's close enough to that. Yeah. Um, and everything else around Bondi, Wallara, Double Bay, Bellevue Hill, uh, Rushcutters Bay, Rose Bay, you know, Vaucluse, all up there. Massive, massive Liberal seats. Um, no, nowhere going. All right, I'll, I'll do. A, I'll do a couple for the lounge. Where are we? Two six one five. So you can, if you're at home and you want to, you're listening to this, you can go to the mbnco.com.au and uh, oh, just two, look for the right. Two six one five. Who lives there? Two six one five. That's oh yeah, PAs. Oh, you're a turd, PA. <laughs> but he, he's got the Cyclops near the number three, so you'd, you'd guess that'd, uh, that'd be... That'd I'll be close enough. Oh, December. Well, we will commence work from December 2013. Jeez, that's a new one. I haven't read that one before. 
Yeah, right. So he's yeah, he's well. When when will oh, you know what? I want to know when they're going to finish, not when they're going to commence, because that could mean anything. Mm. All, All right, right now, I'll do Milo. I'll do two, one five, more. Four, one. one more for the lounge. Two five four one. One more for the lounge. And the others do them yourselves. That's fair, isn't it? <laughs> I think Milo is going to be. Yeah, you're right, Milo, because you're in a labour seat. Yeah, Nara. You're you're on fire, Milo. It's December two thousand thirteen. There we go. Yeah. All right. Well, enough yeah. of that rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I'll, I'll just do mine four two two six because I think I've got the the two thousand and fifteen. Oh, yeah, we will commence work in your area from two thousand and fourteen in phases to commence in two thousand and fifteen. So, look, this is all going to be. Wouldn't finished. it be funny if they listen to this podcast and everyone in your street's got it except you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, <nah>, not really. <laughs> Wouldn't be funny. I'd be upset. Well, that's what happened when I first moved in here. Uh, that every like there was, I did Telstra searches on cable, and there's cable all around me. Uh, but when I rang Telstra, they said, "No, nah, you can't get it." And I went, "Well, what are you talking about?" I said, "There's cable to the left of me. There's cable to the right of me. Across the road behind me. Like, mm. why can't I get it?" And they go, "Well, the database says you, your computer says no." Well, I, it, yeah, ask them to come out. That's always yeah. one under the ground. So all I, what I did was I so I hung up, and they're like, "Hang on a second. So, so I rang him back. Uh, or, no, I, I think I must have just typed it in before I rang him back. But I typed, because I'm on a corner, I'm on a corner, I typed in yeah. the other address. Oh, right. and guess what? I could get it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean other address? You've got two addresses. Well, I'm on you a corner. So I, right. I rang up with my driveway address, which, right. is, which is on Street A, but my right. property also fronts Street B because ah. I'm, I'm on the corner. The database was, so depending on when their database was built, and depending on uh, the information they got when that development was going in place, they would have had either one or the other. Yeah, they must have. But, yeah, so anyway, so I said, well, listen, you've got it here, and I can't get it here, but it's the same house. And they, they still wouldn't believe it. I said, well, I had a hell of a time. Oh, but anyway. Dudes. I oh, know. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. Who came, so who came out in the end, Stephen Conroy? No, <laughs> some guy, and he actually had to, he, he had to throw a wire under the road. He pulled a wire up out from across the road, under the road, yeah. and up into my place. So oh, good, on him. good on him. Yeah, good on him. Then he left his pliers here. Thanks for them. Thanks yeah. for that, dude. <laughs> something, something for nothing. All right. So, oh, geez, we're, we're running late tonight, aren't we? So we better do an audible. What do you got? Yes, let's do an audible. So now, I'm going to screen share this so I can play it. I'm going right. to try this. This is new. <laughs> oh, God. Crash. Oh, good God. Crash. Oh, well, let's put Eric on so we can... Oh, here we go. The wizard. Here we go. Oh, hello. Now, now, I'm going to do a little... Where are we here? Where are we? See, see, I should be better prepared for this. Now, Ozzy, just gonna if, you this. Want to, if you want this book, you could probably get this one for free. If you want, to, if you haven't signed up for Audible at the moment, go to the aussietechhead.com.au website and sign up for Audible's 30-day trial offer and you can download one book to keep for free. Now, um, once, you, once you join, uh, you can, you, it's, I think it's about, what is it, 14? I think you can. 40, 30, you've got 30 days now, haven't you? 30 days, that's right. Yes. And if you keep it going... You'll automatically build for fourteen ninety five, which gives you one audio book per month. You save thirty percent on additional purchases and up to seventy five percent off additional of CD audio book retail prices. Free daily audio subscription to the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. Um, there you go. Now over one hundred thousand right. titles to choose from, compatible with iPod, iPhone, Android, Kindle, BlackBerry, and over five hundred MP three devices. There you go, good stuff. And if, there you, go. if you haven't done it, go and look at uh, aussietechers.com.au webpage, click on the banger, banner and banger, join up, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Do yourself a favour. Now, how are we going with The Wizard? Right, I'm done. Now, this book, audio book, and I'm sure there's a hard copy version as well, is about Nikola Tesla. For those who haven't heard of Nikola Tesla, uh, he was born in 1856, died in 1943, credited as the inspiration for radio, robots and radar and has been called the patron saint the patron saint of modern electricity yeah based on the original material and previously unavailable documents this acclaimed book is the definitive biography of the man considered to be many the founding father of modern electrical technology among tesla's creations were the channeling of alternating altern, alternating current fluorescent and neon lighting wireless telegraphy 
Wow. And the giant turbines that harness the power of Niagara Falls. Now, there is a company that is named after Telstra, Telstra, Tesla. <laughs> yeah. It's called, now type this into your browsers, everyone. It's Tesla, T E S L A, motors.com. And this company is started by a, um, a gentleman, I can't remember his name now, um, started by a gentleman that, and he makes electric cars because, you know, he named it after Tesla. Have a look at these guys, the cars that these guys are building. You will be amazed. All electric, not to, um, not to 100 in about three seconds, these cars. But anyway, go and have a look at that. It's based on this gentleman here that we're about to hear about. Here we go. And I uh, can't hear anything. There we go. Oh, you can't hear anything. Sorry. Mm. Hang on. Specs. Look at these cars. Tesla okay, Motors. T E S L A Motors. dot com. They do look pretty spiffy. They're probably uh, quite expensive. Oh, they're, they're, yeah, they are. Hang on. Here we go. Order your tes Tesla. Finance. I remembered my reluctance to be dragged to the meeting in his suite at the Hotel New Yorker. When my that coming through. Was spending yep. a few days in New York before returning to Detroit after our summer vacation at the Jersey Shore. Now I would have preferred spending more time at Radio City Music Hall or at the docks watching the ocean liners. I was shy, rather overwhelmed, and spoke hardly a word to this very tall, very bald old man. I would have been repelled as any young all American boy should have been be hugged and kissed by this stranger if my father hadn't often done the same. This is the way my mother's women friends often acted, but my American mother's brother would have only given me a firm handshake. Little did I realize that Tesla's hugging, kissing, and patting my head would belie his famous idiosyncrasy of an overriding phobia of germs. Surely a young boy would have been teeming with germs. One could therefore speculate that this idiosyncrasy was possibly an affectation designed to preserve his space. While Tesla lived, some considerable degree of his fame endured, in no small measure because of his ability to stimulate the media. However, after his death, the nation and the world were occupied with other more pressing matters. There you go. So, yeah, so he's the founder of this company, I'll tell you. No, no, he's not the founder of his company. His company is based on his name because and it, because it's an electric car, right? And obviously they and he was the the, the pioneer of elect of electricity. He did, uh, yes, he did the AC alternating current. That's right. So they yeah. they they honoured him by calling it Tesla Motors. Oh, nice. But nice. very interesting story, and I'm going to get this book. I haven't got mm. it yet, and I'll be. I'm actually downloading it in about 30 seconds and just lining it up. Look, I actually, I, I went through the catalogue last, or last this week, gone, and I did find a good book that I'm gonna that I'm gonna get. I'm gonna do a review. Maybe when I get a chance to listen to it, I'll, I'll do it. But it sounds really good. I'll tell you what it is later, Eric. I don't want to spoil okay. the fun for all everyone. Right. All right, don't spoil it. <laughs> no, oh no, keep 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 the fun. Um, all right, now we'll do a couple more stories. Just geez, we're 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 getting on in time. It's gone fast tonight, hasn't it? Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Mm. Oh, there is a, there's a, uh, a there's an Australian Tesla Motors site, uh, the lounge. Yes, PA. they sell them in Australia now. They've been given approval. Telstra Motors. You can, you can buy them in Australia. Telstramotors.com forward slash en underscore au. There you go. Check that one out. Now Kingston USB. I thought I'd bring this one out. I don't know why, but yes. anyway, uh, Kingston USB. They're bringing out the uh, USB three thumb drives. So that's pretty cool. Ah. Now, uh, interestingly enough, I can give you a uh, retail price. Looks like now, where did this come from? This was EN, probably American dollars, I'd imagine. But you can probably, you know, work it out. It's similar, 16 gig, $20, 32 gig, $50, 64 gig, $100. Now, interestingly enough, now you might be able to throw some light on this one. We probably won't. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> operating systems. Now, supported by all operating systems except Mac. Oh. Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows oh, you know XP, why. Linux. Because they make them, in, they, they, they're probably formatting them in the factory as NTFS. That's well, probably why. Shouldn't matter, though, should And, and they don't, um, 
and Macs aren't in TFS. Yeah, but wouldn't you be able to reformat it? Oh, I probably could. Mm. Oh, look, but a oh. lot of a lot of USB two two drives are interchangeable between operating systems. They've got what's that uniform? I think it's FAT or something that Mac uses. Yeah, fat as well as Windows. And I well, think that's that's an old was, window. I thought the the fat came from Windows. Well, that's when I started. It does. Windows. Yeah, it does. That was a, but yeah. I because I know I've grabbed USB sticks off my daughter and thrown it in my Mac, mm. and there's been no problem. Yeah. So, and she's got well, she's got a Windows machine, so I don't know why why that is. That's quite mm. that's an interesting conundrum. But I, I suppose whatever the problem is, I'm sure that's going to get fixed. Uh, Google Plus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Google Plus has rolled out a new look. Quite yes. sexy too. I, I do like it a lot better. You yeah, reminds you a bit like of Facebook. It uh, maybe, maybe, but uh, but I don't care if it does. I just found I never was one. I've never been a big fan of Google Plus. It was a very messy. I couldn't. I found it hard to follow. What the hell was going on? Um, right. Maybe I just didn't go there often enough. Um, my 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 uh, weapon was Facebook. I think that's most people's. You know that's. You know, you got Facebook on your phone, Facebook here, Facebook there, everything's yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So just why not? But uh, look, I, I looked at the Google Plus today after the new rollout, and yeah, it's it started to come together for me. So geez, mm. there you go, little visual visual person I must be. So look, I've got a little picture here for those on the video. You might as well have a bit of a bit of a squeeze at the new look if you want it. There you go. See if I can uh, expand that out for you. There you go. You like that? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's not bad. So you say you got uh, yeah the the little the, your people down here are actually saying what they're saying. You got your your I suppose selection of what you want to do down here, like your toolbar, and over to the right hand side. Now look, some people have said that they don't like. There's a lot of white space. Um, that doesn't really worry me too much. Oh um, uh, look, I quite like that. Yeah, I heard that too. I was listening to some some I won't be insulting some dude on this week in Google. And he was complaining about, oh, too much white space, blah, blah, But But it's clean. Yeah. What do you want to put on there? Bloody ads and, well, that's and what, you know, make yeah. it, you know, banner ads like they did in the 90s? Well, that's what Facebook filled just there. Everything's flashing white, at you. Yeah, Facebook filled their uh, stuff up with um, ads. Oh, this, is, this is clean. This mm. is clean, nice and clean. Mm. Did you have any more stories, Eric? I've got one more. <clears throat> it's about the uh, fact that iPad has now become synonymous household name like Kleenex is for tissues, Xerox is for um, copiers and, you know, that sort of thing. So there's an article and it's up, Glenn's got it up on the show notes. You can put it on the site. So it's a very long article, so I'm not going to read all of it, but it, go, it just basically says that um, when people talk tablets now, you know, computing device tablets, um, they say, I want to buy an iPad. I don't know if I want to buy an Apple one or something else. So they're already relating the, the, a tablet as an iPad, like, you know, in the, in, you know, like a Kleenex is a tissue or is, you don't say cola mm. when you want something to drink, you say Coke. Maybe, maybe because I'm in the, in the know, like all of us here. But, yeah, I don't I – w- yeah, I wouldn't – I know the difference, I guess. Um yeah, but a lot yeah. of people because they because yeah. they started the category and they're the most successful at the category. Well, look, um, I, t- I tell you, it's like the iPod, isn't it? You, every you, you you might be referring to a to a uh, generic MP3 player, but you but call it right. an iPod. But you call it an iPod. Yeah, that's right. You do call it an iPod, yeah. so maybe the iPads go on the same way. Yeah, I think it is. You know, Band Aid is a brand name. You know, you ask for a Band Aid. Yes, that's yep. actually a brand name. Yeah. Yep. And what, 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 what what's the real name? Like a, 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 a what is it? Um, a, a, the real name I think was Bandage, oh, Band Aid yeah. Bandage. But everyone's just called it Band Aid. Yeah. You know? And you can buy lots of things that look like Band Aids that aren't the Band Aid brand, but mm. everyone says I'll have a Band Aid, regardless of who makes it. Yeah. It's why it's is it is it when these terms become generic that that's when you lose the trademark. Well, no, that you don't lose them. You can still protect them. What happens is they're worried that it can lose its value because it's too generic. Right, right, right. But that's that's where the the irony is and the balance that has to come in because they promote the brand so much in order to, mm. to get it in people's heads that that's what you ask for. But then over time, that actually devalues it. So they, it's a fine balance that they have to have to manage there. 
Yeah. Now, did you have any more stories? Because I've got one more before we go. No, I am done. All right. Well, not to end on a sad note, but the father of the Commodore 64 has passed away. Jack Tramiel survived the horrors of Otswich concentration camp during the Second World War and emigrated to the US in 1947. Took his first sideways step toward becoming a legend in the world of technology. He opened a typewriter repair company in 1953. Mm. He named the business Commodore Portable Typewriters. In 1955, he launched Commodore Business Machines. Yes, I remember those. In Toronto. What, do you remember the launching in 1955? No, yeah, yeah, I was there at the launch. <laughs> no, I remember the name. Um, yeah, so in 1955, machine, uh, Commodore Business Machines in Toronto to get around US restrictions on imports, specifically Czechoslovakian typewriters from Warsaw-packed countries. With the help of investor Irving Gould, Tramiel rode the company through numerous ups and downs until 1977 when it launched its first computer, the Commodore PET, the P-E-T, while successful, the pet these days is pretty much a footnote to the glory of the VIC-20 launched in 1980, that long ago, 1980. And its follow-up, the, the one and only Commodore 64, which came to the market in 1982. The 64 was a true phenom phenomenon, selling anywhere from 12 to 30 million units, depending on who you are. So thank you, uh, whoever wrote that story. Although a major figure in the, also a major figure in the evolution of the Atari. There you go. Well, very good. Now, poor old boy, there he is. He's finished. See you later, Jack. See you, Jackie. See you on the flip side. All right. So, Say hello to Steve for us. Yeah. That's about it for us tonight, this week, this episode. Uh, if you want to see those show notes, you can just get yourselves along to the aussietechheads.com.au website. And the show notes are there. Every week you can check out the actual stories where we source them from. Uh, if you want to read further and more into them, uh, links back to the original source. Uh, my links, Eric's link, links, everyone's links. And when Will yep, comes Audible, back... Will's the Audible's link. on there as well. Audible comes up there as well. That's exactly right. If you want to see what here or find out what Eric has uh, recommended over the time, you're a bit of a Eric Audible fanboy, or well, his picks are on the website. You don't have to listen to each show individually. Just the same with Garth. You can go to the website and just pick the bones out of it. And that's about it. So, uh, yeah, contact Eric, Glenn or Will at Glenn, Eric or Will at AussieTechHeads.com.au and also Glenn, that's me, at Twitter, at Aussie Tech Heads, one word, Eric at Eric Franco, Eric with a K, and Will at Mr. Tomkinson on the Twitter. So, and don't forget the Facebook, Aussie Tech Heads Facebook page. Jump in there, like it up. Like it, like it, like, like it. it. Like it up a storm. That's right. <laughs> All right, so thanks, Eric. Thanks for popping in. No problem. And, uh, we Stay tuned for chewing the fat, people. Oh, of course, chewing the fat, chewing the fat, coming up and live on the secret live dot the dot com, or also on the iTunes if you can't catch us live. Chewing the fat, coming up now. Till next week, ta da. See you guys. Thank you.